YouTube, what's going on everybody? My name is Corporate Surf. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you guys had a safe and fun celebration. 2026 has already been very exciting within the M Trainers as Bardos, uh, one of the founding fathers to like our static method, uh, is pushing for world records on Kovacs again. And then Zianlo, who's one of the top static and clicking players, uh, made his own guide. So with all this top aim trainer clicking action going on, there's a little me with some jade scores. These are my Voltaic Season 4 scores from October of 2024. This is when I was pushing for like my original master grind. And um, yeah, they're they're Jade. So why would you take advice from me when there's the Onlo method, there's Bardos method, there's Maddie's videos, there's tons of there, Lou has a great guide. Why do I need to put my guide out there? Well, first of all, I love to aim train and I love to push scores. I spent 2025 20, just pushing my snake track score. The very first day that it came out, I was the bottom of Grandmaster and I pushed it to Celestial number two. Um, but I, I have solid tracking scores. I have control uh, at Nova here. And then you can see for season four, my reactive air is Nova as well. So I know how to push a score. Um, there's also a niche that I, that I fit in, which is smoothness. This is me snake track guy uh, top 15 for TSK my rank is uber by category so I know how to push scores I do have strengths which are smoothness what can I bring then to this conversation of clicking so what I want to put forth are some experimental training methods uh, for specifically score pushing it's not going to be heavy in technique although I believe I have a good understanding of the technique um, but really I'm just going to put forth this uh, structure for you guys to play and you can hopefully use the Zianlo method or the Bardos method or whatever version of static you like to play but you can use my format to guide your training. The last thing about this I'm gonna give an analogy here if I was gonna buy an old PlayStation 2 console let's say that I'm gonna buy on eBay right there's gonna be fancy eBay consoles limited edition versions modified consoles all kinds of stuff but Sometimes you might scroll down or scroll to the next page and you see a very cheap one. Price catches your eye, but it says as is, untested, right? Buyer beware. So I don't think that I'm selling you a dud here, but take it with a grain of salt that um, I'm only Jade. I'm not a celestial clicking player. So um, I think that this can help you, but I want you to try to make this your own or just take bits and pieces of what you like from this and apply it yourself okay all that being said we're gonna jump into the aim trainer now okay here we are in the aim trainer we're gonna be playing wide wall five targets intermediate and I don't have a score here I've never played this one before I have it downloaded because that's what we're gonna make some stuff for when we have a blank slate like this though we know we want to push wide wall five targets we don't know how to approach this yet what I would recommend first is a warm-up so my friend Seer FPS would say to play an easier version of the, of the tax. So we could play, you know, wide wall five targets novice, or we could also play something like entry clusters or, you know, any of these easier versions than intermediate. And we could play for 10, 20 minutes, something like that. For this method, I think, you know, 10 minutes is a bit long for our warm up. So we're just going to do, you know, a little three or four task warm up to get us into what we're playing. Something that I found very helpful for my clicking training and I learned from my coach and my friend Slendro, who is a top level clicking player, uh, is the importance of reflex clicking. So this is going to be the key to our warm up. Okay, so that's scenario number one. Okay, the next scenario is how many people have you seen make fun of Tile Frenzy and Grid Shot Ultimate? Well, in a lot of respects, they're kind of wrong. Reflex clicking, in this sense, is a really good warm up. Some people have joked so much about reflex clicking that they've neglected it and it's really important to your clicking. I'm including these 40 second variants with varying FOVs and then I'm going to include the original one. So we have a very quick and easy warm up here. I want you to play everything one time. That's true for this warm up, but it's also true for everything when we fill out the rest of this playlist. Okay, so I have the playlist done. This is what I'm going to be testing here in this video. Um, I'm going to show you some more detail about how I'm going to approach this. What I want to do is I want to play everything one time all the way down to here to the benchmark I will play this twice so very briefly here why have I chosen these things talking about these variants let's talk about the FOV part of the variants first why would I change the FOV for these variants 
Well, let's first look at this 85 FOV, this closer perspective. So if you look behind you, where you're standing is the exact same spot as the original. The target size is the exact same value as the original. Even my CM360, which is the distance it takes on my mouse pad to cover between these targets, it's the exact same as the original, but my sensitivity feels faster. I also notice my errors more because I'm more zoomed in. It's a closer perspective. But the real benefit here and what I hope to drive home with this is the emphasis or the mind muscle connection with my arm is greater here. I don't have to use more of my arm in this FOV variant than the original. But for some reason, because of this close FOV, I make a better mind muscle connection with my arm for this flick. With this close FOV, I notice my arm more in a wide or medium flick. Okay, but let me show you something about this. If I were to actually take this guy, which is our character, and if I was just to bring his location closer. So look, we, we brought him very close to the targets. Now when I go here and save as close. So we look at this one. Here I am, much closer to the targets. Also with this FOV, you know, that's a little bit crazy. But now on my mouse pad, I physically have to cover more distance for a swipe, right? Because I am closer now, now I'm actually using more distance. The other thing is if I was really desperate to use variants to emphasize wide clicks, I could just spread all the targets apart, right? I could just take each one and click on it and drag it farther so that when a bot spawns over here, and I, I could probably eliminate some of these too, you can take these variants in Kovacs and use them to emphasize certain things. Like if I wanted to, you know, focus on clusters and stuff, I could add more spawns in the, in the middle. You know, you can use Kovacs throughout these scenarios to target specific things. Okay, so that was a lot of talk about the close perspective. Let's talk about the far back perspective, 120 FOV. This dot is the same size value as it was for 85. We are also standing in the same spot as the other two versions, but our sensitivity feels actually a little bit slower. Despite the CM360 being the same, so it's the same distance on your mouse pad being covered, you know, it feels different than the other versions. For this 120 FOV version, I try to make a mind muscle connection with like my forearm and my wrist. Most specifically, I try to feel this tension in my, my micro adjustments. You notice certain things with this far back FOV. Okay, let's talk about bot count variation then. So the original here has five targets. So why would we play a version with one more and one less? So let's look at this one with one more. There's six targets here. There are more frequent instances of clustering where the bots are spawned close together. Of course, you could just play a clustering practice scenario, but I think when you're trying to push a score on a static benchmark, it's nice to see how these clusters play out. The other version, of course, would be the four bot scenario, the one, one last scenario. These variants, I think, are better for flicking practice. With one last bot spawning, there's more opportunity to emphasize these more sweeping motions. Practice your flicking a bit more. Okay, so I hope you guys have found everything to this point to be at least interesting, hopefully helpful. Um, you know, you can take or leave any of that that I've suggested with the playlist, but we do have the playlist set. What structure am I going to take through the playlist? I think this is where I lose a lot of you. I think this is where some people call me crazy, but this is how I'm going to play this playlist. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a series of checkpoints where my eventual goal is to have a master score on 49 CM360. Okay, so checkpoint number one, my starting point, 200 CM360. I'm gonna go to Kovacs. There are 14 assignments in this playlist. I'm going to play everything one time and move to the next one, except for the bottom one, which I will play twice. This is the benchmark, I will play this twice. So there were 14 scenarios, but it takes me 15 minutes to play through. And let's say that I get a score of 100. I am now ready to move on to checkpoint number two. Checkpoint number two is 185 CM360. I chose this number because it is 7.5% faster than 200. 
All of these follow the structure of 7.5% faster. Some were rounded to the next whole number that would be a faster sensitivity. So I rounded 135.8 to 135 rather than 136. So okay, I go through here and I play everything again. It takes me 15 minutes. I'm playing this on 185 now. Let's say my score here is 120. I am ready to move on to 171. What if it was 90 though? If it was 90, I am not ready to move on to 171. What do I do when I don't beat my score here? If I could not beat my score, I'm going to go to VDIM, and look, we're playing the wide wall 5 target. So just picture this as the intermediate version. This is the entry one. But I would start after the last benchmark. So I start here, Pokeball Frenzy, all the way through this benchmark version. So only these, and I would play these only one time. We're not playing the entire VDIM. We're definitely not looking at these numbers on the side and playing those counts. Literally, everything in this range, that is wide wall, five targets, is what we're playing. We play it one time, and then we come back. And let's say when we do that, we crush the score 150. Really, what I hope that you find is that each of these, just naturally as you go down, become easier and easier and easier. You Really, you shouldn't have to do any of the VDIM stuff until, like, in here right I don't think that your scores will be good enough if you only play everything one time until you get to like this this range down here now if you just push your score on 200 and you cycle through the playlist five times and then you cycle through this playlist seven times on 185 if you just play and play and play here you're gonna get stuck the point of this method is for it to be fun and I want you to cascade through these sensitivities now the reason why I'm doing faster to slower is so that you have a good emphasis of what your arm is doing and then slowly start to feel yourself blend better uh, as, as you go down okay that pretty much wraps up my video here that is the entirety of the method I hope you guys find it very beneficial I hope you guys can uh, hit a very nice score on below 50 CM 360 I think that's gonna be best for your aim in the long term is you know hitting some of your best scores at uh, a playable sensitivity range you know I don't want you to just hit your score at 200 CM and stop so um, I hope you guys find this method beneficial to your growth on the platform and I hope that you can use it in tandem with other static methods so thank you all again for watching and I'll see you in the next video peace